Picture Theatre. This is the light for the wrecker. After the removal of the roof, the side wall is dropped and steel cables are thrown over the proscenium wall for the angle pole. As the riggers prepare the next cable at the top of a 60 foot wall and crawl back to safety of the side wall during the next pull. And they quietly straddle the wall to prepare the next hawser. Their assistants inside extend the height of a ladder by placing it in the bucket of a front end loader. As the riggers nonchalantly stroll along the top of the 60 foot high wall apparently unconcerned with the heaps of broken bricks on this side or of the concrete footpath should they slip the other way. ton loader straining, the next pull commences. Lighter loaders bash down the wall, minor walls with their loading buckets. Whilst the loaders work continuously to fill the waiting trucks. On the top of a 60-foot wall, the compressor-operated jackhammers batter brakes in the reinforced concrete parapet. With a 20-day deadline to clear the site, the re speed of demolition is entirely dependent on the speed of the removal of debris. And the 10-ton loaders are powered by 90-horsepower diesel engines with a loading capacity of 3 cubic yards per load and they work continuously loading the line of waiting trucks. Even manpower is used sometimes to shift bricks as riggers prepare the back wall for demolition by threading a steel cable with a 40 ton strain test through the wall and back onto the loader. But the angular construction of the proscenium makes only small bites possible each time. as a safety precaution. A badly bogged truck is easily pushed out by a 10-ton front-end loader. section of the side wall falls with the loaders working frantically in reverse gear to avoid being caught by the top section of the wall. Reinforced concrete sections are destroyed by continual lifting, 
dropping and pushing from the front end loaders and this process eventually reduces the sections to pieces small enough to be loaded into the waiting truck. The side wall goes and minor steel girders are removed by a straight pull from a loaders with another loader carrying the weight of the girder in the centre. Another major worry of the demolition companies is the loss of material by pilferers. Second-hand bricks worth seven pounds a thousand seem to disappear each time the boss looks the other way. Palings are even removed from neighbouring fences to help with the easy disappearance of the loot. concrete bio box is demolished in small sections. But the 10 ton balcony girder, which is a valuable salvage item, is carefully removed by this powerful mobile crane costing $50,000. After jacks steady the base, the, tri the crane eases out the minor girders. The main balcony girder, 70 feet long and 5 feet high and 10 tons in weight, is a nightmare to the wrecker as he has to find an immediate buyer for it to save fantastic additional cutting costs of removal to his own wrecking yards. The girder is stowed on the end of the site whilst the boss anxiously awaits the prowess of his salesman. The ticket box leaves the greener pastures. As the jackhammers prepare the next section of the side wall, the reinforcing rods are broken by bolt cutters. The wall resists the efforts of the loaders and additional breaks have to be made in the wall before the pull is successful. girders are salvaged by the mobile crane. At times the loads placed on the trucks do seem a little excessive and the springs certainly sag as the weight is taken. remains standing. And oxy torches are used to cut away the final holding girders.
Only the front wall remains for demolition. And a hundred ton section is brought down in one pull by two loaders working together. Surely now we can ponder over this thing called progress when we see $6,000 spent to demolish a building with a replacement cost of $200,000 and to reduce it to a piece of land again, exactly as it was 30 years before. Such thousand dollars and to reduce it to a piece of...